Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, Amazon best-selling author, Inside Out Health, and host of our new fabulous podcast, Proven Health Alternatives. Today, I want to ask you, are toxic chemicals damaging you? We talk so much about the gut, brain, heart barriers, but we don't talk enough about how chemical exposure can actually lead you down a path of damaging the single cell barriers. Toxic exposure is in my office right here. It's outside, it's in your home, it's everywhere we go. So it's sort of unfortunately a polluted world in which we live in. So let's go through some of the ideas and some of the things that are toxic, what to do, how it hurts you, and of course I'm always gonna provide a solution. So number one we're looking at, do you have genetic susceptibility? Some people have more genetic susceptibility. Where do you live? So for instance, I'm a guy that grew up in New York City versus somebody up on a farm all the way upstate in New York, gonna have a different set of pollutants down in the city, if you will. It's always been voted one of the more dirty cities, though they've done a great job most recently. In that, you're gonna get from this genetic susceptibility, you're gonna get a breakdown of barriers. You've got skin, people forget, leaky gut, leaky lung, leaky brain, leaky skin, leaky heart. All of these things that we're talking about, essentially where they're damaged, again, as I said earlier, is a single layer system. So with your gut, if you unraveled your gut, it is the surface area of a tennis court with the thickness of a paper towel. If you look at your brain, your brain is even thinner as a single layer. Skin, lung, gut, and brain all can lead to what we call metabolite formation. Now, when you're looking at the chemical exposure on one side, you're getting oxidative stress. Going down oxidative stress, you get the activation of T cells and macrophages. So macrophages are the captain of the ship of inflammation. They determine if you're gonna continue with inflammation or through a lipid class switch at the cell membrane, they can tell something called leukocytes and neutrophils, uh, things that continue with inflammation to shut down or resolve. T cells. All this leads to pro-inflammatory cytokine production. Cytokines come from the uh, pathway of NF-kappa B, which is the signal transducer of inflammation. Cytokines lead you towards what we call inflammation. Now I'm gonna stop right here on this left side at inflammation, because I wanna come back to inflammation, because where inflammation can lead you to, obviously, autoimmunity. We go to this side, and here we have chemical binds to tissue proteins forming, we call them neoantigens or antigens, so B and T cells. B and T cells are from your immune system. They're actually from your adaptive immune system. So we're born with two types of immune systems. We have an innate immune system, which we had, bless you, Steph. Thank you. <laughs> You're more than welcome. So we've got the innate immune system, which we had thousands and thousands of years ago from, or from initial, you know, from start. And then we have the B and T cells, which are an adaptive. When our adaptive immune system goes on attack B and T cells, we can lead ourselves down a path of what we call autoimmunity. So by activating all these neoantigens, you can get an antibody production. Antigen, something that gets passed through a barrier, exposed from a barrier. These chemicals can damage barrier. They come through the barrier, they're exposed, they're called an antigen. Your body's immune system responds with B and T cells. When your body's immune system, that's inflammation, that's localized and systemic inflammation, when your body sees these antigens, these chemical exposures, uh, lead, mercury, BPA, and the like, you can lead yourself down a path of inflammation when you attack yourself because your immune system is on overload, you get autoimmune reactions. So many different things lead us to autoimmune reactions. I wanted to emphasize chemical exposures. So when people come in, they ask, well, I wanna change my diet. Fabulous, exposure, dietary exposures, gluten, dairy, corn, gums, etc. But chemical exposures, one of the biggest spots where people get a chemical exposure is their mattress. All mattresses, unless you ask, have flame retardants. In addition to that, where else can you get chemical exposures? Yes, you can get chemicals in your foods. Yes, you can get chemicals in your air. Right here in your room, if you were to use paint, unless you're using a natural paint with no chemicals, you're exposed. It's in your air. Hairspray, gels, aftershave, perfumes, toothpaste, 
moisturizer, all these things. Sunscreen now. Sunscreen was just in the news. These are all chemicals. So it's virtually impossible to protect yourself from all the chemicals. You can limit them and you would really need to limit them. So a lot of people come in and have all these autoimmune diseases. They have psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, and the such, and they all point to, here it is, like psoriasis in the skin, rheumatoid in the joints, and they're not realizing that there's specific things, whether it's dietary, environmental, and or chemical, that can damage the barriers, seep through the barriers, causing an antigen antibody, ultimately leading to inflammation and autoimmunity. So when we talk about health, it's about lifestyle. It's about exercise. It's about stress reduction. It's also about limiting your chemicals. So if you guys have any questions about that, feel free. I think this is a real valuable um, topic. So do me a favor, like it, share it. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.